diplomat is in Israel tonight. He says to conclude a ceasefire agreement in Gaza, but on the ground, the chances of a deal look slim. Hamas says that 28 people were killed by Israeli airstrikes in Gaza last night, and the two sides are blaming each other for blocking the path to agreement. Also on the program. Kamala Harris is on her way to accept her party's nomination for president with a slight edge in the polls. We'll have the latest live from Chicago. And Kovacic driving. Kovacic! On the first weekend of the new Premier League season, champions Manchester City are straight back to winning ways at Chelsea. TV News with Geraint Vincent. Good evening. Hopes for a ceasefire in Gaza appear to be hanging in the balance tonight after Israel and Hamas accused each other of undermining international efforts to broker a deal. Israel's Prime Minister described the Hamas leadership as obstinate and called for more pressure to be put on them. Hamas accused Benjamin Netanyahu of placing obstacles in front of an agreement in order to prolong the war. Negotiations are due to continue in Cairo in the coming week. The American Secretary of State arrived in Israel tonight. A warning, this report from Amy Lewis contains some distressing images from the conflict. In Gaza, they may dream of peace, but this is what darkness brings. Building after building was struck overnight, and footage released by Israeli forces. In daylight, they pray for those they lost. This, the names of six children who were killed alongside their mother. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has arrived in the region to try and seal a ceasefire deal. America has expressed optimism, but Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu less so. Hamas up to this moment remains obstinate, does not even send a representative to the talks in Doha. Therefore, the pressure should be directed at Hamas and Sinwar, not at the Israeli government. Hamas officials have objected to what they say are new conditions from Israel. And release their own footage of both sides engaging in exchanges of fire. With fighting comes funerals. In the West Bank, hundreds mourned two Hamas militants who were killed in an Israeli airstrike. Across Gaza, the war has killed more than 40,000 Palestinians, according to local health authorities, and displaced most of the territory's 2.3 million residents. On the streets of Tel Aviv, a reminder of the pressure on Netanyahu to be part of a resolution and to secure the release of Israeli hostages. Uh, we cannot afford not to have hope. Uh, we can only imagine family of the hostages. I don't know how to survive. We don't believe in this government at all. Uh, we want our hostages to be back and we want to find some sort of solution to what's happening here. Uh, With fears of regional escalation, there is only one way to end this. Amy Lewis, TV News. Ukraine's armed forces have released footage of what they say is the destruction of a second key bridge in Russia's Kursk region. The latest strike comes just days after Ukraine targeted another bridge in the area with the aim of disrupting Russian supply routes. This evening, President Zelensky called upon the United States and Great Britain to deliver agreed weapon packages to further help with the offensive. The American presidential election now, and Kamala Harris and her running mate Tim Waltz have set off on a bus tour of the key battleground state of Pennsylvania before heading to Chicago for the Democratic National Convention, which starts tomorrow. Dan Rivers is there and awaiting their arrival. Dan, Ms. Harris will be looking to continue the momentum, I guess, that she's enjoyed since becoming the party's nominee. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a huge week uh, for the party. It will start off uh, tomorrow with an address uh, by Joe Biden, effectively really his swan song to the party, although his 
presidency has still got more than three months to go. It's his last real opportunity uh, to address the party. And then I think they're going to very quickly try and shift and look forward. But they've got a kind of constellation of Democratic Party stars. We've got Barack Obama speaking on Tuesday, Bill Clinton uh, on Wednesday, and then culminating in Kamala Harris uh, on Thursday. As you say, she's been out in Pennsylvania, but we'll be bringing this message that she's try been trying to stress of, uh, on the economy of bringing prices down and helping uh, middle class voters. I think they'll be guarding against any sense of complacency, but there's no doubt here that the mood will be uh, ebullient. She is uh, up in uh, several polls, up in some of the swing states, only by a few percentage points, but a distinct improvement on where Joe Biden was. This will still be a competitive uh, election, though. The only real fly in the ointment is the potential for protests. Uh, here we're uh, being told that there are uh, large anti-war pro-Palestinian protests which are scheduled to take place, which could bring tens of thousands of people uh, to the city, to the gates uh, of this convention, uh, if you like. But I think uh, there's no doubt that the party feels in a good place, it is energised, and it feels that Kamala Harris has momentum, a critical ingredient, they feel, as they head towards November. Okay, Dan Rivers in Chicago. Many thanks. There are warnings tonight that the country's prisons are very nearly full up following the quick sentencing of people who took part in riots earlier this month. Prison officers say the system is just scraping by at the moment, but warns the next few weeks will be extremely tight. It comes, as reports suggest, that the government could trigger emergency plans to avoid overcrowding in prisons as soon as tomorrow. Well, our political correspondent David Wood is here. David, what do these plans involve? Well, in essence, the government has to find more prison places, and pretty quickly there are a series of measures they can take. Don't forget, before the riots, there was already trouble and, and problems with prison capacity. That's only been exacerbated by the, far, the tough sentencing and fast justice of rioters. Now, next month, uh, it's likely that certain prisoners will be released a little early to free up space. But what could happen as early as this week, according to the Prison Officers Association, is that police cells may need to be used to house offenders who are waiting a court date. Now, the government isn't denying this this evening. That could, of course, put pressure on police. And it could mean that some people don't go to court in the first place. As of Friday, we only had 340 spaces left in a closed adult male estate which is the estate that where most offenders will end up. So it's a case of juggling spaces around. We get spaces coming back online this week, which will free up about 200 cell spaces. So that will help. But obviously with Operation Safeguard, where we're using police cells, we may have to start triaging prisoners in police cells. And another consequence of those riots is a new anti-extremism strategy. Tell us about that. Yes, Yvette Cooper talked about this whilst in opposition, but it's certainly been sped up in response to the riots. It should only take a few months, but what it will look at all forms of extremism, trying to clamp down on them, try and find perpetrators both online and on the streets. It will look at the growing trend in Islamist and far-right extremism, also general violence extremism, but particularly misogyny as well. As I said, this should only take a few months, although there isn't an exact date on it. If you like, the riots were the first big test for this newish government, but they were a short-term test. I think this government will be judged on how it deals with long-term tests, prison capacity being one of those extremism being another. The answers, they're not easy, they are expensive, and we know there isn't much money around. Yeah. Okay, David, thank you very much. From the high street, with the fashion brand set to close its remaining shops this week. The company which owns the label fell into administration in March, and a month later shut 15 stores. The remaining 31 shops in the UK are now expected to stop trading by Tuesday, putting at risk more than 500 jobs. The fashion brand began in Glasgow in 1988 and went on to expand around the world. And the champions carried on where they left off this afternoon. Manchester City are now seeking a fifth successive Premier League title and they made another winning start, beating one of their potential rivals, Chelsea, 2-0 at Stamford Bridge. Chris Scudder reports. Another new face in the Chelsea hot seat and for Enzo Maresca trying to outsmart his old city boss Pep Guardiola was every bit a baptism of fire. And it didn't take long for the new boss to feel the heat from the champions, Erling Haaland carrying on where he left off last season. If I'd have been too, but for some acrobatics in the Chelsea goal. Inelastic touchover from Sanchez. And at the other end, what would have been an equaliser was 
wipes out for offside. Small margins make a big difference. Chelsea had their chances but did not take them. And City did the opposite through Kovacic. Especially hard to take for Chelsea when a returning old boy did the damage. Big spending Chelsea boss Todd Bowley had seen enough. Victory for the master against his old pupil. Chris Scudder, ITV. Well, for a lady called Mary Spears from Stockport, today's victory for Manchester City was the icing on the cake. Her 106th birthday cake, that is. Mary is thought to be the team's oldest supporter, and to help her celebrate, the club sent her a signed shirt and a special message from one of their biggest stars. Here's Carrie Davis. Yay! There is a fairly obvious theme to this birthday party. Manchester City. They're my family. They're all Manchester City mad. From the oldest to the youngest. And Mary isn't only the oldest in her family. At 106, she's one of the oldest women in Britain. Born during the First World War, she's been alive for all but one of the 34 major honours Man City have ever won. A true lifelong supporter. Loyalty rewarded with a signed shirt and a message from one of the current squad's biggest stars. I've heard it's your 106th birthday. Um, I want to wish you all the best. I hope you have a lovely day and I'm sending you all my love. And after an appeal from the care home where she lives, she's received more than 400 cards from all over the world. I just don't believe it's happening. I think it's just another person. Until just over a month ago, Mary was still living independently in a house she had shared with her sisters Dorothy and Ruth. So what's her secret? I've got quite a few of my... And, uh, don't smoke, don't drink. Like my younger sister used to say, don't chase men. There are some men she has time for. Manchester City win. A victorious start to the season. An extra birthday gift. Carrie Davis, ITV News. And that's all for today. The national and local weather forecasts are next. Thank you for watching. Good night.